Everything with the fractions just lends itself so easily to common misconceptions. And I think so many of those misconceptions have happened because we've just told the students what to do rather than trying to get them to understand what's going on. And I think really some of the misconceptions or what we perceive as misconceptions are really just because the students are trying to apply what appears to them to be just rote procedures and they're just mixing all those different things up. It always amazes me, and it shouldn't by this point in my career, that you know when I give a couple of eighth graders at the beginning of the year two fraction addition problems, one of them with common denominators, one with unlike denominators, almost every single student does the, you know, we'll say two fifths plus one fifth. They all know it's three fifths. But when I give them the one half plus one fourth, most of them know what to do. But there are some that all of a sudden then just add the numerators and add the denominators, which they didn't do when there was the, that common denominator. So I think some of those misconceptions, that's really just, they never got to that understanding stage. They never truly learned it that first time. I think our job as educators is to have a wide range of different tools at our disposal to help our students really grasp the understanding of adding fraction with like denominators and unlike denominators. Instead of just saying, hey, add three sevenths plus two sevenths, put it in some sort of a word problem. I like to use candy bars. And I'll ask the students, you know, which would you rather have, half a candy bar or a fourth of a candy bar? And almost every single student says half of a candy bar because they're so used to a half is always bigger than a fourth. And then you show them the size of the candy bars. A half of a king size, or excuse me, a half of a miniature size, or a fourth of that big king size, and all of a sudden they start to recognize that fraction is part of a whole, and we need to know what that whole is. It's so powerful that we use some sort of hands-on tools. Whether it's the fraction tiles, whether it's fraction circles, fraction squares, fraction towers, it doesn't really matter which hands-on tool we're using, but they need to have something because it starts to build that understanding. When they see the two-fifths plus one-fifth and they're using you know, the fraction circles and it's two of the one-fifth pieces plus one more of that one-fifth piece, they see that they have three-fifths pieces. But when, then when they look at one-half plus one-fourth, they have a one-half piece of one-fourth piece, they see it's not two-somethings they start to see the reason why we need to have that common denominator. When we teach math as a set of tricks, we're really telling our students, math is so incredibly difficult that the only way you're gonna get the right answer is if I tell you some little trick. And we all know that the kids, we as educators may say that trick correctly to the kids, but they hear it incorrectly, or they start to misapply it to different spots and all of a sudden, because they like to say invert and multiply, anytime they have two fractions, they invert and multiply, even if it has nothing to do with divisions. So I think we have to be careful not to, to resort to using tricks. But when we're dealing with fractions, because we know it's such a difficult concept for so many of our students, and we know it's one of those concepts that they continually build upon throughout the grades, it is so vital that we're getting that rich classroom discourse, that we're getting that student-to-student -student discourse. Having to explain something and put it into words deepens that level of understanding. There's also times that I found in, in my career, I can say something out loud to my class, but as soon as a student says the exact same thing as what I said, all of a sudden the student's like, oh, that makes a whole lot of sense. And they're like, wait a minute, that's what I just said. How come I'm not getting the credit for it? But when a kid says it, they hear it differently. And it's so important that they're getting that student to student discourse. So I encourage all of us to, as we're teaching mathematics, fractions in particular, that we're really increasing the amount of student to student discourse. And that can take a, a wide range of things. It can be a think pair share, it can be working in small groups. There's lots of structures you can use, but it's so important to get that rich dialogue going on in your math class.